have the state sports policy since 2019 but we have not implemented it because I don't think you even have a sports manual as such and uh, you know it's always the implementation part that is very important I'm not saying that the department, the department is trying its level best to support each and every one of them but there should be a plan from all the state sports association to put these proposals well ahead of time Infrastructure is the most important. If the infrastructure is not to the level of international level or national level, then it's put difficult for the players to compare or to means compete with the other players in the other state or in other countries. Athletes need facilitation, not felicitation. Where yesterday also most of the uh, news have come across the uh, am wrestlers who have bring glory to the state and the country, as well the uh, bodybuilders but they facilitated yesterday. But uh, in the recent weeks before they going to Turkey, they have to run from pillar to post to get uh, financial assistance. You have to have the entire ecosystem to produce champions. Even if you have the whole ecosystem, like they have now in the medal winning countries like Australia, UK and all that, it's not 100% 100 is not enough. You're still in this children. You need 150% from here and here. Hello viewers. Today on our program, Let's Talk, we are going to discuss sports, which many think is not a very sexy topic, uh, not as sexy as politics. But I think it is high time that we discuss this topic because we are looking at the Northeast uh, Games that's happening in the next few days. And what's interesting is that the government has raised the cash award for gold medal winners from rupees 7,500 to rupees 2.5 lakhs, which is a very, very big raise. And this has come after the implementation of the state youth, uh, state sports youth policy 2019. And uh, one would like to believe that if there, if there is the proper infrastructure, Meghalaya would have been able to produce many more world champions in different uh, spheres of activities. To discuss this and other issues today and uh, the forthcoming National Games, we have with us uh, John F. Karshie, working president of the Meghalaya Olympics Association. Uh, we have a representative from the sports department, ba Paya B. Nongri. He is the assistant director of sports. On my left is Ba Ailat Khangap Kunta, international footballer. And on the left of Ba John is Hame Shania Asuyam, internationally acclaimed kickboxer. So, welcome to this discussion, and we hope to make a very good impact on the viewers so that many more people will now start taking interest in sports, in the development of sports and in supporting the sports infrastructure in the state. In the recently concluded, let me go to John Karshing first. In the recently concluded uh, National Games, 36th National Games held in Gujarat, Meghalaya could not score any, anything at all. There were no medals. Uh, what do you think is the reason for Meghalaya's dismal performance? Uh, is it that we didn't have enough that our athletes didn't have enough training? Uh, is it because there's not enough support system? Is it because the sports policy has not yet actually been implemented in letter and spirit? Uh, it's a very sim uh, simple uh, thing. I mean, as far as uh, our perspective is concerned, is that uh, you have to have the entire ecosystem to produce champions. Uh, as the as we all know, it takes about uh, ten years or ten thousand hours of hard work and training to produce a champion at a national, international, uh, Olympic level. So these are the few, uh, uh, in short, in a nutshell, that uh, you know you, you can't expect uh, to have. Uh, although in the past we've had. Although in the past, I should say we had we, we've had uh, Lindsay CM winning so many international medals, 
uh, we've had Komasi uh, Dorwar, normally she represented, uh, you know, uh, from archery, she represented uh, India in the Asian Games in 1986. Yeah. We have uh, Bansara, uh, also who had uh, represented uh, India. Lindsay CM also represented India many times. And in their uh, in their time, there was no such felicitation of this nature, like, you know. But so uh, I recall in my brief interaction with Ian Campbell recently, who came and helped us with the talent identification. He was talking to some of the kids. We asked him to speak something. He said, "See, it's." Even if you have the whole ecosystem, like they have now in the medal-winning countries like Australia, UK and all that, it's not 100% is not enough. You're still in those children. You need 150% from here and here. Okay. Head and heart. So it's not only that ecosystem that has to provide. So if you see, how did these other uh, athletes, Damang also is one of them mm -hmm. from karate, they, they, they went ahead, you know. Uh, Many athletes, you know, by is here. They, they went ahead because they had family support. Yeah, some had some family support, but I should say, you know, where are the coaches? You know, the whole ecosystem has to be there. And uh, the bottom line is that, okay, government now is putting the seed of everything. And uh, it, it, it requires a lot of nurturing to let that seed grow, you know. Uh, so we'll, uh, for, as far as I'm concerned right now, why we didn't get this because we are starting now. You know? Okay. Let me come to Bapaya because you are from the state sports department. Uh, we have the state sports policy since 2019, but we have not implemented it because I don't think you even have a sports manual as such. And, uh, you know, it's always the implementation part that is very important. I was looking at the policy and I saw that uh, the policy envisages that children of the age of seven, eight years in all the schools have to start practicing or learning some kind of sport. But we don't see that happening in the schools yet, especially, you know, during COVID, there was actually no sports activities at all. And we know that uh, education is not just about books. It's also about uh, building the mind, building the physique, building the human spirit. So what do you have to say? Why the slow implementation of the policy? Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, Kong, for, the, for inviting me here. Um, and to all the panelists who are here. Actually, when the policy was uh, finally came out in 2019, actually, see, from the government side, from the department side, uh, for, there's a operational manual which has already come down, especially in the incentive side where we give incentive to these, uh, you know, athletes who have uh, represented the state in national level, international level, which we have seen yesterday where we have uh, cash incentive has been given to these medal winners who had won laurels for the state, for the country, in fact, and for the state. You know, in arm wrestling and in uh, bodybuilding and in fact uh, the department has been giving all these cash incentives as per the manual of the you know working manual of the policy because we have come up with that manual and we have been given been giving all these cash incentive to all these winners right from the year 2017-18 so we are continuing on this uh, so we have already finished giving the the cash award for the medal winners at national regional, zonal level okay. for 2017-18, and we are uh, looking forward for, you know, giving more incentive for those athletes who have won medals even in these you know, recent years. Uh, coming to your point, uh, ma'am, regarding uh, school sports, I feel that, uh, see, actually, in fact, football is a very popular sport in the state. But the playing population in our state is very less at one point of time. So as of now, it's just increasing, you know, with the intervention of the government in giving more uh, sporting facilities. You know, I think the government is coming up with better sports facilities, both in the uh, Khasi Jaintia region and even in the Garo Hills, you know, for preparation of the national games. But I feel that... Uh, I feel that these, the education department, 
right from the school level, they are stakeholders, you know. They are stakeholders. So, are you working in convergence uh, with the education department? Because that also is important. Yes, actually, in regards to the youth policy, we are doing that. Okay. No doubt. We are working in, in you know, in. Do you think it's a good idea to combine sports and youth? Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, very much. Because I feel that, uh, see, if you say sports, it starts from the youth. Yes. It is the youth of the state. So we have a population of almost 75% uh, youth in, you know, no, I, the, reason I'm asking this, the reason I'm asking this is because uh, when you look at sports, sports, we, un we all understand what it means. But when you look at the youth policy, it's more than just sports. It's building the intellect. It's yes. building the other hardware and software. So, I, I mean, there are many people who think there should be separate policies, a separate youth policy, a separate sports policy. Then maybe the focus will be better. Yeah, actually, see, the government has come up with the sports policy and in fact, it has already approved even the youth policy. So there are different policies for, for the youths, those for, the, those for youths who are interested in sports and those for youths who are interested in other capacity okay. building okay. efforts. No? So the government is uh, working hand in hand with the education department for the youth policy. We're having the Aspire Megale program, which we, you know, which we have the done the youth survey for almost 65,000 65, uh, respondents we have got okay. Okay. across the state. And uh, <clears throat> see, as per these youths, even though it's a, from the youth policy side, 50% uh, of these youths have opted the career that they want sports as their first option of career. Okay. Oh, so that and has become a career option yes. today. Okay. And education, and in fact, education has come third. That's, that's nice to know. Yeah. Let me now come to ba Hamish and Suyam. You have brought laurels to the state as an acclaimed kickboxer champion. What do you have to say about your experiences as a sports person? How much of uh, assistance, support, both mental, physical, how much of it is from the family and how much is it from the state? Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for inviting me in this program and the panelists and to all the co-panelists and regarding about that question uh, this achievement is not only myself but it goes to the parents to my coach and to all the teachers during my school time as well to all the in in the officials in the association support administrator and also to all the NGOs which I cannot mention they are came across and with their helping hands too. That's what I am able to stand here okay. till I am today. Okay. Because without the helping, without the contribution of from their end, like I said, I cannot go beyond that. Because in it, when it comes to coaching, um, it's, I don't get that much infrastructure when it comes to in my hometown village. But the main thing is that uh, it's only in near the ground. We don't have that kind of uh, uh, tatami or ring or that uh, 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 I can say it's a, a punching bag or anything but uh, with all the natural talent that we have and uh, with also with the help of my coach with the technology that we are having nowadays through YouTube and and with the exposure that I am ha ha having in national and as well in international so this, these are the things that uh, boost my moral and as well from the government side although it is not financially fully but it in 2014-15 and they uh, much uh, that not only beyond my expectation like 100 uh, percent but at least 50 I can say 50 and 25 percent but during the this uh, recent months where well, I've been facilitated in the cash award which I've been waiting for almost five years mm -hmm. to get that incentive but I'm gra grateful to the government as how well much did they give you uh, uh, only national it's 60,000 mm. where uh, in 2008 and 2009 the gold medal in national it's 7,500 and now it's uh, which I've got national medal in 2017-18 it's 60,000 in national but although it, so now if you bring a gold medal you're going to get more than that huh? 
thousand. Uh, <laughs> but only in international, I think it's that is in the manual, yes. in the sport yes. policy. Yes. But hopefully it will continue not only in uh, maybe just ahead of election, not only uh, it will be just in this I think and it's maybe. important also to think of an athlete, athletes association, which yes. I don't think is there. So each one is looking after their own game. Yes. They're looking at promoting their own game and pushing for their own game. I think it's important to have some sort athletes of... Athletes committee. Like, yes. Because in international level, also international Olympic committee, also they have their own athletes committee, coach committee, mm -hmm. and means to streamline, to, yes. to look on our views. Maybe it uh, as high time even uh, so John also having for, uh, the head of the Mikhail State Olympic. If they have that athletes committee in uh, Mikhail State Olympic Ocean from all the athletes, not only from kickboxing but all athletes, if they have their committee, they can share their own own view yes, and signal yes. points. So it can it not only uh, athletes can do great things, but also it combination from all around, right? From the coaches, from the sport administrator, from the Ocean, from the government. It needs combined so that we can go ahead because athletes come first yes. in any sport. Yes. So that's what I can throw a point. Mm -hmm. Let me come to Ba'ailat Ngapkenta. You have been an international footballer and uh, football has always been Meghalaya's first love. And I think we, we give a lot of attention to football. There are many more football fans than any other fans. So what has been your experience and where do you think government could have done better to put Meghalaya firmly on the international football map? Thank you, ma'am, for your invitation, me, along with the panelists. Yeah. So, well, first of all, I would like to share my experience to the international level. So, I have been to Germany for the under-17 football team, Indian football team, then to represent the Indian in the Asian Football Federation under 17 in UAE, Dubai. <coughs> then in Turkmenistan under 20 AFC Cup. Mm -hmm. So we have shared a lot of experience, but we have seen from there that as a state of Meghalaya, we need a lot of exams to, uh, uh, means, uh, to have to learn a lot from those uh, country which have already have experience good infrastructure, what they have, mm -hmm. and the uh, professional coaches, mm -hmm. even the trainers, the physio, the doctors, they have everything they have. But when we compare to our state, we don't have that much of infrastructure, which is at, at international or international level, mm -hmm. we have that standard. So I think that is the point that we have to be, the government have to look into about. Mm -hmm. So most of the, we have seen that even football is the most popular sport in Megalia. Yes. But till date, we don't have that international or national standard level of the ground arena for the mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. So it is feel that we feel that it should be for the government. They should think that football is the popular sport. At least they should create some standard, less standard level to that uh, for the different feel also for the different dis discipline. If we want to be, means if we want our state to be in the top level compared with the other states of India. So I think we require as by by is here, but John, I think they should take the suggestion that they should uh, means upgrade our infrastructure because most of the, even Meghali also have seen that they have invested a lot in the infrastructure. Not from this time, only right from the time. Like uh, they have invested in the indoor stadium, mostly in every corner of the state. Mm -hmm. But this infrastructure I have seen that is just wrong utilize of all this mm -hmm. infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mostly the indoor stadium is made for the sports activities. But when we see it was utilized for the non-sports activities. Mm -hmm. That is then it was created. Uh, for the interest of the young, uh, young enthusiastic uh, players, mm -hmm. interest it was. See, this down. is where you need the community to come in and and become the stakeholder no? yes. of those infrastructure. Otherwise, uh, it is left. It is nobody's. It belongs to nobody's. Nobody's business. Nobody's interest. And I think that is where perhaps um, the sports policy has this. Um, 
you know, the, the forming of a working committee. Uh, is that committee yes, in place? Yes, ma'am. It's already in place. Okay. Who yes. heads that committee? Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, ma'am, it's uh, Commissioner Sports. Okay. Heads committee. And has it been meeting from time to time? Uh, they have been meeting, ma'am, for I think twice or thrice. Are the Rangpa Ashinongs part of that committee? Uh, I'm not sure, ma'am. I'll... Yes. No, we are, uh, sure <clears throat> there are there are two committees. One is uh, as per the policy. One is to be chaired by the CM, which is to be meet once in six months. Okay. Uh, once uh, one committee is to be chaired by the commissioner, and uh, or the minister when available, um, which is to meet uh, every three months. So, awfully, we commissioner has been convening the meeting very often, mm -hmm. uh, in view of the fact that you know we initiated a lot of. Uh, uh, Certain activities have started rolling. Thankfully for the policy, you know. Um, I can interject on what. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, know, please, please. So I just want to say that uh, what uh, it is for this very reason. It is very, very this very reason that uh, you know uh, when we took over from uh, we took over the state Olympic in uh, two thousand fifteen, uh, got elected. Then uh, we pushed. And, uh, you know, as uh, individually, I played Taekwondo. And of course, in the school days, we played Taekwondo, reached a certain level, and then we got punished for reaching, for playing sports, because you had to reach. That then, I don't know if you remember Father George, he had a very simple rule. If you're late, you will run again another. The whole period, you will run. Parents. And the stress was more on, on book learning, book education. Learning. So, we faced so many challenges. So, then we took up, uh, you know, various activities at the Shinong level, uh, sports club, was the general secretary there. Uh, ran the sports club. So a lot of experience and we saw this challenge that at the end of the day you need what Baila said, you need a proper infrastructure. Number one. Of course then the coaches and all those things. But if you don't have that foundation, that house, it's like uh, you know, children don't know where the school is going to be tomorrow. We've had a view with the government also, not this government, many governments. Every time election comes then we have to vacate our indoor stadiums. In Kasi, we say, you know, like you, there's a popular saying about the sports uh, associations. Because come one act, one big, uh, you know, event. no offense to anybody, one big event, uh, either religious, political, or whatever, then you have to move that whole, all our equipment. Mm -hmm. That, you cannot produce a champion like that. You have to have a dedicated, you can't have all other kind of activities in this sporting. Then why facilities. not put your foot down? Yeah, yeah, so now now what has happened? So like I said, you know, when we took over in 2015, we realized we need infrastructure. And uh, we, if you recall, we successfully hosted the South Asian Games in uh, 2016. And that is when the government saw, okay, like, okay. So there was a big uh, debate with the then former chief minister. How did Meghalaya get only 28 disciplines and Assam got like two hosts around 24? So that triggered a very heated debate between myself and the former chief minister. I said, okay, Assam got a, is hosting this because they hosted national games yes. way back in 2007. Yes. They have the infrastructure. Right. So, so that is when uh, they said, okay, how do we do it? So we gave them a plan. Thankfully, the Department of Sports presented a plan. We sat for almost two hours in a committee room. And that's when he said, okay, let's go ahead. So, on a, our internal analysis also we found all the states who have hosted national games are medal winners today in India. So, uh, th that means it makes an impact. If you see Manipur today... Yeah, so I, I was going to come to Manipur. What is it about Manipur that ticks? What is it doing right? Because... Manipur is as small a state as ours and uh, if you look at the budget, we have the same amount of budget. But why is it that there is such a strong push for medals in that state and not in Meghalaya? Uh, <laughs> is it a psychological thing? Uh, is it uh, that... I, yeah. I, I, if I may come to that, actually what I've, I've learned when I was, you know, I was studying as a... I was doing my studies in physical education. See. From our state, we would see four or five students st studying in physical education, mm -hmm. and when we come back, uh, when we come back, then we might be we might get employment either in the department or in the school. But like I said earlier, see, we need the education department to have physical education teachers or physical training instructors 
right from the school level. See, when I was studying, mm -hmm. only four or five of us were there in the institution, while Manipuris were there around 300 to 400. Mm -hmm. Physical education, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, physical education uh, students. Mm -hmm. And they go back to the states and they're being appointed in the schools. In fact, uh, I feel that is one of the points that, you know, Manipur has really come up in sports. No doubt they are very passionate, they are very, you know, they like to play sports. And I feel that... Um, they also have the infrastructure. They have, no doubt. They had conducted, they had had the national games. Yes, yes. I think the first Northeastern state to, mm. to, to have the national, the national games, games, to host the national yes. games besides Assam. 1999. 1999. Yes. <laughs> So they have that infrastructure and I feel that it's not that we cannot do it. We can do it of not. No, of if you compare can. the infrastructure of uh, Manipur and Meghalaya, would it be 50-50, would it be 60-40? No, no, they are far ahead. <laughs> far ahead. Yeah, but far uh, ahead. but if, I, if I may actually see like now, maybe the past few years, okay, there is infrastructure no doubt in all the in all areas across the state but now there are more infrastructure coming up in all this in all the districts almost 182 infrastructures coming up and state-of-the-art infrastructure is coming up also here in the state of Meghalaya in the JN sports complex we have the integrated sports complex coming up in the JN stadium we have the PA Salma stadium coming up in Tura two indoor stadiums in Tura which will be having a, a swimming pool We'll be having a badminton course and in the integrated Indian sports complex here in uh, Polo. But is there a demand for that in Tura? Definitely, or is it is it just that the government is pushing it? Definitely, ma'am. See, actually, if we... Because, uh, I, let me just come to this point. There are certain sports which certain regions of Meghalaya take very kindly to. For instance, if you look at swimming, then uh, areas of Shela and around that area, they're very good at swimming. Then uh, if you look at archery, maybe the uplands of Khasi Hills. So not every region is good for every sport. I think uh, maybe that's where the government should be. Uh, I mean, that's how the government should uh, provide the infrastructure, need-based infrastructure. And not just, you know, what happens most of the times in our state is that it becomes a populist thing. So you, somebody is demanding a stadium, you give a stadium, a football stadium, which is half maintained and it, it really doesn't, you know, people don't really use it to the optimum. So uh, what would you say about that? See, specific sports are played across the states, across the state. Uh, but uh, I feel that Tura and Shillong being, you know, Shillong being the capital and Tura the next yes. bigger district in the state, you know, catering for all Garu Hills. I think, no doubt, we need these bits, big infrastructure there with uh, multi-purpose, uh, you know, sports which can be played in this infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But we have to, no doubt, you know, go down to other districts, have infrastructure there for other sports facilities also. Even identification of talent is important, right? Yeah. Let me come to Ba'a. Uh, Hame, uh, when we had a little private conversation earlier, mm -hmm. you had said that uh, it is more important for government to facilitate yes. than to felicitate. Mm -hmm. Can you just expand on that? Uh, regarding about that, uh, uh, many athletes, I can see in media, we can see in newspaper also, have to run from pillar to post to get uh, financial assistance when they have to go for national or international. That's what I, uh, there's one article which is written in 2021 where I mentioned that uh, athletes need facilitation, not felicitation. Where yesterday also, most of the uh, news have come across the uh, AM wrestlers who have bring glory to the state and the country, as well the uh, bodybuilders. But they facilitated yesterday. But uh, in the recent weeks before they going to Turkey, they have to run from pillar to post to get uh, financial assistance. That's what I come to the conclusion that athletes need uh, to spend more time on on uh, proper coaching on on term of practice instead to run from pillar to puts, post to get. It puts a pressure also on yes. the athletes. That's where we have recommended 
actually, if you, I think you reported our com my comment yes. recently, where I said, you know, can the government, uh, you know, of course, we are a small state, lim funds are limited. So can we start with a small corpus fund? Yes. You know, yes. Where MSOA is also there. We have many stakeholders in the MSOA. So can they put a corpus fund, you know, where we don't touch that fund and we live through the interest? Yeah. Right. So all stations, as uh, Siyama said, then we can, uh, you know. Uh, so that is on discussion with the government. So let's see how it uh, What about... Uh, you know, corporate support. Most of the states that uh, have sports persons have a huge corporate support. I would like to draw your attention to one uh, one very important uh, fact that uh, United Kingdom also faced a similar situation. They were going almost very bad in the Olympics. I mean, a country like UK till about 2009, 2008, uh, they were not performing well. They had a brainstorming session and then they also realize, okay, funds equal medals. Yes. You put the funds, you get the medals. So how to raise funds? In fact, I've mentioned a couple of times, uh, government can actually seriously think this. I don't think the people will, you know, <laughs> object to this. They started the lotto for sports. You know, the lottery for sports. Okay. So people, uh, you know, like we have uh, archery here, you know, the thought team and all that. So if the government uh, in UK, they started lotto for sports and that generated almost billions. Then they hired the best, they set up the best, and today they are back on uh, top 10 medal winning countries. Mm -hmm. uh, so what Basuyam is saying is right, like we are still associated, so we get stressed out. So uh, there should be an immediate uh, thought process where you create, like in Manrega, they have a corpus fund, mm -hmm. you know, because in Manrega also you have to pay within, by, the, by law, you have to <laughs> make payments within 15 days. Mm -hmm. So similarly like that, if there's a corpus fund, you know, it may be small, but you start small, right? And uh, then associations can manage with this. Then the other thing I'd like to draw in attention is, a lot of times we also get the flag. We get the flag that, oh, you know, why this uh, athlete is not getting funding and this and that. So uh, just to, you know, our viewers to, your viewers to know that there is uh, all international tournaments are funded by the Ministry of Sports. But there's a catch. The catch is that only those federations who are recognized by the Ministry of Sports. So they go anywhere, everything from A to Z is uh, funded by the government of India. Is Meghalaya there in the list? No, no, it doesn't go by Meghalaya, it goes by the Sports Federation. So there the are 30, Federation. 35 federations. Mm -hmm. They have to submit their budgets in advance to the government. So every year, every federation, there are around 30, 40 federations in India. They submit their budgets to the government of India and the government of India okay, says this is the f thing, you get funding. Which so, also means that uh, the asso associations have to be professionally run. Yeah, of course. Otherwise, uh, course. you know, preparing a DPR and all that. Yeah, yeah. So budget presentation to the government, uh, that's why now all the federations have a CEO at the national level, mm -hmm. mandated by the court actually. So they, are, they have all put uh, CEOs to present these budgets. So Indian Olympic Association all these federations which are, you know, recognized by the government video, they get. Now at the state level, we don't have that uh, flexibility because of the limitation of funds, you know. So that's where we have to brainstorm to figure out how to... Yeah. So sort the, of. The, the crux of the matter is that you have to professionalize so that you also get uh, a footing at the national forums, no? different forums and also if you look at CSR in our state it's uh, we have some of these big cement companies we don't really know what they're doing then we have all the banking companies all the other you know NIPCO uh, we need to look now at how much are they contributing to the sports uh, coffers in fact, in fact the committee chaired by the commissioner we had started that process <laughs> then the uh, lockdown came oh. Okay. Uh, anyway, they, now, now uh, you can pick up. So we are, we are planning to pick up we are on this matter. We had a sitting with all the prominent corporates. They were called in the secretary. We had a discussion. They said, okay, like, what is your CSR? So they also expressed their pressure because they, you know, they also are yes, having yes, to yes, handle yes, all kinds true. of pressures. Mm -hmm. uh, so that discussion was going on and suddenly the lockdown came and then we had to stop. Baila, if you have to give three important suggestions to uplift football, 
as a discipline because football is already much ahead of the other disciplines. I'm not undermining the other disciplines, but I'm saying that football already catches the imagination of the people of Meghalaya. And uh, maybe football could lead the way for us to think of the other disciplines also, you know, proceeding along the same lines. What are the three things you feel is are very much needed to put full football on the international map? Yes, I have, a, have already mentioned before that infrastructure is the most important. If the infrastructure is not to the level of international level or national level, then it's put uh, difficult for the players to compare or to uh, means compete with the other players in the other state or in other countries. So when we compare with the, as we have seen that in India, before they are using all those artificial turf, but when we come to the international level, this artificial turf is not preferable for playing in their standard. Mm -hmm. So right when the, when that come the World Cup under 17, then all the artificial turf have to be removed, remove, and lay with the natural grass. Ah. So the infrastructure we have to see, and the government have to see the guideline as per the international football mid FIFA. Mm -hmm. They have to see that then lay according to what the FIFA has instructed mm -hmm. as per rule. And then and the others is that the, we have to get the professional coaches, trainers. Mm -hmm. That is the most important. So. Most of the coaches and the trainers in our state is just passing the coach level, which is lack in experience. So we have to go for experience for the international mm -hmm. means. They have to experience with the other countries so that they'll catch up. And then the last one is that uh, they have to be doctor, physio, dietitian. Also, they have to be involved in the sports or football mm -hmm. so that this uh, also they are playing a big important role, role for them mm -hmm. to develop their sports as football in the state. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what about the diet? We haven't spoken about the diet. How do I mean? <laughs> how do you develop your physique without the proper diet? And how do you afford a proper diet? If I may, ma'am, uh, just go to what Basuyam also said earlier regarding you know uh, the funding of the government. I'll come back to what Ba. That has said, actually, see the government. The government in itself have many areas to cover, like the sports department in itself. It has many areas to cover, not only for funding to the state sports association. It has to look at uh, you know uh, giving some funds to uh, uh, students who wants to pursue coaching, who wants to pursue in physical education. Uh, it has to look out to how to give grants to the different clubs and associations throughout the state. Mm -hmm. Even though maximum of the grants are going to the state sports association, even though they cannot give much, but the, the department itself is trying its level best to do that. Um, regarding regarding the see, Ba Suyam has mentioned also mentioned that uh, it is that these associations are running from pillar to post to get, you know, uh, funds from the government to participate in different levels of competition. I'm not saying that the, part, the department is trying its level best to support each and every one of them. Mm -hmm. But there should be a plan from all the state sports association too. They have to, they, have, they should have some kind the of an budget. annual calendar, yes. you know. They should, uh, you know, uh, put these proposals well ahead of time. Yes. So that the government itself also, you know, it's just it's not 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 at the last moment, not the last minute. You know, you come you come to the department and you ask for the funds. It's very difficult because you know the government system. There's a system that works. It has to go from one one level to another level. But even though we are trying a level best, you know, even within a week, within ten days, you know, we fund them. Okay. You know. Okay. In fact, trying, this, we are trying level in best. In fact, uh, what yeah. my assistant director has mentioned, we from the state Olympic, we ensure. We mandate that all the state associations have to submit their activities report. We have directed them also to produce to us your their calendar. But John, maybe there is need for training in that area, you know. Uh, so because I, you can see that there's a, a total lack of professionalism in the financing aspects, in the budgeting aspects of the associations. Like uh, Ba had said, that if you have a calendar of events, 
then you know exactly how much you will be spending for that particular event. And then the whole year's budget you can prepare. So that's what now the sports policy has indicated that all state sports association recognized by the government will there's a amount which is mentioned annually mm -hmm. right i think it's mentioned 10 lakhs per annum state associations so uh, subject to performance okay you know so these are challenges which we are pushing the state associations there are 21 of them uh, we are trying to push and also others which are uh, under the uh, recognized category so uh, there are a lot of work to be done a lot of work to be done in terms of uh, professionalizing all these uh, modes of working it's just like what i mentioned earlier in the national level all the state uh, all the federations national sports federations nsfs they have to submit there's a i think uh, i think by october november they have to submit all their they have to submit all their uh, what do you call it budgets, budgets. so similarly we know the government's uh, financial year ends in uh, you know 31st March. So we've got to be planning much, much ahead mm -hmm. to support this. Mm -hmm. So that's why we've been trying to, what we've done now is pursue. We are also discussing with government whether we can have a fixed month or a, you know, a calendar for the Megala Games mm -hmm. or for the, any other games. So it is working with the state's policy now coming in. This operational manual uh, also uh, you know, being uh, drafted and coming out. That will really help in streamlining the whole process. So, we, we, uh, as somebody mentioned, I hope that this does not get disconnected after, you know, because you don't know what happens after the next election. So, we hope this so process this continues. So, this is the problem, you know. You, I think everything that, every decision taken for the purpose of sports should be institutionalized so that whichever yeah. government comes, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. And ba, uh, since he had said that the artificial turf is no yeah. good. So I think the uh, government will have to do a re, you know, rethink on that because everywhere you go, there's a demand for artificial turf. Yeah, actually, see, coming to what Bailad has said regarding infrastructure and regarding professional coaches, see, the, 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 the department and the government itself also, you know, they are trying to push uh, athletes to go for, you know, coaching courses, you know, we have very less coaches in the state in itself. In fact, for football too. Not talking about other sports where we have, uh, where we don't have coaches at all. Even though the department in itself has already advertised so many posts in the post of judo. What about people like him who have already played and are fit to be coaches? Uh, see, actually, to be to be appointed as a coach in the department, you have to finish your you have to finish your coaching. Diploma okay. in, from the National Institute of Sports, whether it's from Patiala, from Calcutta, from Bangalore, or any other recognized institute by Government of India. Uh, but football, by any means, they have the Asian Football Confederation where they have the professional license, where they can get license. I'm not saying that football, they don't have coaches. They have, as of now, but not plenty, but not much. You know, they need more. Okay. okay. If, I may, if I may say again on this, right, uh, to value add what bar. I was saying, uh, the seven medals were won by India recently in the Tokyo Olympics, seven medals, you know, which the uh, whole country celebrated, uh, they had high performance directors, foreign coaches. So we are now talking to the government also that we need some of these foreign coaches and we are, the discussion is going on mm -hmm. to get in some of these experts to, you know, because whole country uh, sport uh, approach now is changing. Yes. It's totally changing. Government funding at the ministry level is going forward uh, uh, at the central level. So we hope that will trickle down to the states and it's properly implemented. And I'm sure if we are um, moving in this present direction that we are moving, I'm certain that in the next five to ten years, we will definitely produce Olympians mm -hmm. or national or international champions. You know, if we do it, uh, what we're doing right now. That sounds like a good... Uh end to this program but before we end I, I just um, want yeah. to May I say something yes. uh, regarding infrastructure you are asking about artificial turf especially because we are having the northeast olympics yeah. on the 30th yeah. so how prepared are we with infrastructure okay coming back first by Aladdin regarding to infrastructure for football artificial turf see actually see the Jawaharlal stadium which was uh, initially installed with uh, artificial turf it will be installed with natural turf, in fact, this time. 
with a standard 400 meter track and field, synthetic track and field. Mm -hmm. uh, see the, the weather in our state, you know, yes. it rains almost seven to eight months yeah. max. Yeah. And having a, uh, having a natural turf in a, you know, crowded village or district where people play right from the morning till the evening, that ground won't last, you know, that, that grass won't last for so long. Mm -hmm. If you have a natural turf, you cannot play 24 by 7. You have to, you have to make, the, you have to get, you mean the relaxation for the ground should be there. Yes. Yes. It cannot be played yes. maybe on a daily so basis. It, it has to be uh, protected. Yeah, it has to be of a protected course. area. Yeah. So that's why I think, that's why the government, as of now, they're putting this artificial turf so that, you know, it can suffice to whatever is uh, required in the, you know, in the districts. Okay. They're planning the, the many, many artificial turf are coming all over the state. In fact, how dif how different is it when you play on an artificial turf and a natural turf? It's a big difference playing the <laughs> natural turf and in the artificial turf. Mm. I think if I play in the artificial turf, I, I think I can last only six or five years playing career. Oh. Because we are playing in the artificial turf, we're just playing in the cement turf. Because in, on, on below that uh, grass, they keep uh, the sand which is rolled like uh, cemented. Okay, okay. So they just keep just like laying the artificial top on that uh, ground, mm -hmm. just like a carpet only. We are playing in the cement top. So the so there's a health strain. condition, there's the a strain, strain. There is a strain in the mm -hmm. joint, mm -hmm. means the mental. So we cannot. Then the heat of the yes. turf also is much means more than the natural turf. So we just put have to be, we have yes. to take this into consideration. What I feel is this, uh, what he's saying is correct in the sense that there has to be a balance. balance. Because we have not yet discussed what is the cost to maintain that natural turf. So there are specialized uh, water systems that have to be put in place mm -hmm. to maintain uh, the ground as a, uh, these natural uh, turfs can cost a lot. Money, so uh, uh, again comes down to money. So I think government, what they are trying to do is to balance the aspiration of the youth. They want to play, you know, and they don't have a proper. And as Nomri had mentioned that uh, you know the monsoons here so heavy. So if you see one ground after a play in a village, you see that ground is totally the grass is totally gone. So maintaining that is also another issue on this. Uh, Maybe there's there's need to think. Yes. If there is a better way out. One thing is that, uh, as Meghalaya as populous, but at least from the government, at least one national talk should be as a standard. That is one. But it will be uh, for the village or district level, it can be as a artificial, it's no problem for that. Yes. But yes. for one standard international ground, it should be so that mm -hmm. it wouldn't be invite for the yes. international events. events for even at least if the uh, Asian game, like at least we can host the mm -hmm. football tournament yes. for that. That was the other objective of hosting national games, ultimately to have these standard uh, international uh, venues where we can again host. It's not that they will just become host uh, mm -hmm. uh, structures, mm -hmm. yes. they'll continue to be hosting all international uh, events, you know. And uh, we, we from our side would like to see Meghalaya as a sporting capital of the country. So is there any state in the northeastern region that has a natural turf? Yes, uh, Gohati is having a natural turf. Even so Gohati, the Manipur also also has, also Gohati also has rains seven to eight months a year. So we have to see how they are managing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. But I think what I, I, what I feel is that I'm not saying that we don't need natural turf. We need. If we have plenty, nothing like it. Yes. You know, like Bailat said, I understand a lot of injury is happening in the artificial turf. Players are, well, players are getting a lot of injury, especially in those turf which have been used for 10-15 years. You know, because they need to be replaced after 10 years of, you know, 7-8 years. There's some kind of, uh, you know, warranty period for that turf. So it needs to be replaced. If it's replaced, I think injury might be less. But nothing like it, we have artif uh, natural turf everywhere across the state, you know. No, we can start with one or two as he yes. suggests. So, yes. so the JS Sports Complex is coming up with the with the international standard size natural turf. Yeah, we can have national and both in national and both international events.
That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. So, just before winding, I just want to give some address to the government and to the president of the MSOA. So, before this Northeast Olympic, at least it shouldn't be happened like in the Megalia game. Oh, okay. yes. So, I just suggest them to at least advise them to be prepared for that at least one week before the Mm -hmm. Even start, then let's check everything, the arena, and the most important thing is the if you organize anything, the most important is should be arena, it should be in yes. a proper way, mm -hmm. it should be in place, it should be set up before one week. If anything, one week also you can rectify or you can develop it, you can complete it in that one week. Mm -hmm. And then accommodation. Accommodation also is should required for this. It means a sport person, it means to just to relax sleep well before any competition mm -hmm. and last is the food and food should be in a proper food for the athlete with no complaint for that then for the others i think the government and the msoe can manage for that that is just my suggestion to them oh, thank you very much for your suggestion even from my i have one point of suggestion through this uh, uh panel but as an athlete uh, the one thing we like is like uh, sport injuries. Mm -hmm. Till now, we don't have uh, any hospitals or uh, specific sport injuries. As myself, as an athlete, I have injured a lot in terms of ligaments, in terms of leg or nose. Mm -hmm. Many many uh, athletes have their own because of contact sport or knee collision sports like football. They have a lot of injuries. Mm -hmm. So if there is a sport injuries hospital who treat a specialized doctor or specialized. At least we must have one, okay. in, uh, either in a civil hospital, maybe just one control who treats only specialized for, uh, specialized for sport injuries. injuries. Yes. Yeah. At least as an athlete, if we got injured, it'll take six months minimum to recover. It takes a lot of psychological, it, it affects psychological, mental and spiritual, it demoralizes our... May, may I suggest on this? Uh, the thing is, uh, again, the sports policy has uh, mandated that uh, the government will you know, plan for a, a performance and a monitoring center. Similar to what we took an example from the Australian Institute of Sports. So that's a full sports science uh, uh, backup, you know, comprising all what by lots of. So we are on the process of, uh, with the department from the MSOA discussing with the government relating to how to put this in place. And that discussion is going on also with the uh, uh, with the team of Ian Campbell and all. What kind of uh, you know taking an example of the Australian Institute of Sports, which felicitates the athletes, the top athletes, the elite athletes, to be in that system. So all the injuries, cardio, you name it, physio, all that is part of that system. Yeah, yeah. So like I said, you know, sports is just not one mm, matter yes, of yes, yes, yes. the whole ecosystem that has to be put in place. It should be a recovery centre, it should be there. Uh -huh. so I think we could go on and on, but we are running out of time. So maybe we can have a second discussion at some point. So viewers, you have just heard our learned panellists, two of whom are leading sports persons in their own field and the other uh, leading the Meghalaya Olympics Association and an officer of the sports department. We know many of you listeners are also avid sports persons or take a keen interest in sports. So if you have suggestions, please send them to us in the comments section. Sports persons can share their experiences with us so that we can take the issues up on a sustained basis. We know there are many issues that need further debate and also that a state needs to zero in on one or two or three games that our youth excel in. Thank you very much for watching.